No, and then I reverse the polarity, which doesn't it matter because it's a momentary matter. switch. I know! Do not want to do this four Aww, times. Oh, muffin. Okay. I'm gonna die. It's no secret that our previous attempts at DIY smart home solutions have not always gone according to plan. The smart garage door opener at my old house ended up de-smartifying itself when the wires we soldered started picking up some kind of radio waves that caused my garage door to inexplicably open and close. And our attempts to use GE and Brighton smart dimmers with motion sensors on them for presence detection blew up in our faces when we discovered that Jazzco, the company that actually develops the switches and the firmware for them, won't send out firmware updates to individual users and the freaking things were broken because they were on four-year-old firmware. But not today! Today, we are taking our second crack at smartifying a dumb garage door opener, and it's gonna go flawlessly thanks to this enforcer open and close sensor and this Fortress Multi-input, it's a MIMO, it's called a MIMO. Multi-input, multi-output. It takes the sensor, it writes to the garage door like a relay. What could go wrong? Nothing, I tried it before. Just like you tried those switches. Well, I told you to buy different ones. And just like I tried to segue to our sponsor. Ridge, time to ditch that bulky wallet. A Ridge wallet can hold up to 12 cards, comes with your choice of cash strap or money clip, and makes a great gift for dad. Get 50% off until June 8th at ridge.com slash Linus. Someone get me one, I'm a dad. The main functionalities you want out of any smart garage door opener are twofold. One, you wanna be able to open and close the door from an internet connected device like a Google Home or an Echo or your smartphone. And number two, you want to be able to check the status of the door so that you know if it's open or closed. That way you can configure automations like say for example, if my garage door is still open at two in the morning, that's probably not intentional. Please go ahead and close that. As you can see, the garage door openers that I have, have neither of those things. Now what I could do is I could buy myself a prefab kitted out smart garage door opener. The issue, as I discovered at my old house, is that Chamberlain, who has a near monopoly on garage door openers at this point, forces you to go through their MyQ platform in order to access any of those controls. It's super closed down and just has boneheaded limitations, like when you go to close it, it goes beep, 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 and the light flashes for like 10 seconds before it will actually start to close. I don't need that, I just want the door to close. Chamberlain openers also don't play nicely with simple momentary switch buttons like these ones, so you're forced to use theirs, which prevents you from using any other ecosystem. So the obvious answer is to save myself hundreds of dollars by converting my old dumb openers into smart ones using just a couple of really cool devices. And some of them are pretty simple, like this. Yeah, that's super cool. I can't believe we didn't think of this last time. We had that little roost thing that you can't even buy as a consumer. They sent it to us, but it's battery powered, which means the battery died and then I never replaced it. This is about as simple as it gets. It's literally just a magnetic contact. You see these on commercial garage doors all the time. All the alarms. time. We even have them at the office. Yeah. And I didn't think to use them. Yeah. Literally all we need to do is mount this guy, which is the sensor has got the wire attached to the frame. And then this guy, which is our kind of contact to the door. Oh my God. Wait, that's uh, how it touches? Something, something like that. Uh, like that. that looks kind of janky. Um. Ah! I think this is tightened down and like bending this. And I think that's why it's not wide enough to just come on here. Oh, hey, there's other parts. Oh, well that makes sense. Uh, this L bracket might be useful. And yeah. here's some self tappers. Our contractor's on hand and he's just like, watching the stupid way that I'm gonna do things. He's like, no, no, really, there's a better way, Linus. It's like, dude, I know, but I'm gonna do it this way anyway. See, watch. There we go, see, it worked. No, I'm not taking it out, I just wanna, whoops. So how does it go on? Do we actually need to loosen this bolt or no? Well, I see an example, but now I'm just kind of more confused. Yeah, look, see, it bends. Now it bends. Hey, so I bet I can look at this get guy. it on there now. Sort of, not really. While he's figuring out how to test it, I'm just gonna YOLO install it. Put it like very close to the bottom so yeah. it will detect even if the garage is open. For sure. A little bit. Can I have some self tappers? <laughs> no, I need more. <laughs> oh, that's definitely, okay, that's too much. Okay, well just have them, it's fine. <laughs> Everyone just goes full snark mode as soon as they start doing anything for me. 
It's like, oh, that's not quite enough. Here's three times as many. This is interesting. Uh, you got, they look like horse hoof trimmers, but they're for horse tools. Horse hoof trimmers? No, nope, they look like this. Horse Hold on. Horse hoof trimmers. I'm at a loss. Straight hoofing, bud. Everyone's talking to me like I'm crazy. You know, horse hoof trimmer, what do you even do? I want one of those. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh man, that's not easy to get at. Any bit. And, and the knife, please. Yeah, please. Remove the screw, trip the end off, and then oh, put the screw back Oh, that's a good idea. In. That's way smarter. Thanks, Dan. You're very welcome. These are both excellent ideas. I like Reese's way better. Oh, wait, no, no, Reese's idea doesn't work. Yep, yeah, nope, sorry, we're back to Dan's solution. Good job, Dan. Dan, you win. Yay. I don't know what you win. Oh, my God. These are not gonna cut this. This is, wow, what is this screw made of? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm employed by this man. Check it out, it's all good. Totally fine. All right, rock on, then we're good enough. Is that ethernet or is it two conductor? I told them to run this two This is cat six. Okay, well pick some pairs and. All right. Wonderful, thanks so much, Dan. I knew we had you here for a reason. Dan's here, by the way. So far he has handed me this cat six stripper. He's a stripper. What pairs are you feeling, Jake? Should we be green boys today? Yeah, I'm down with green. Feeling green for success. Why did you have them run Cat 6A if we only need two? I didn't, I told them to run two conductor and they ran Cat 6A anyways. And they also ran ethernet from up there to the mechanical room, I'm pretty sure for some reason. Don't know why they would have done that. So like, God, that I might know. have been my fault. Yeah. I didn't know that it was gonna be all wireless. Okay, Jake, I'm hooked up. We ready to test it? Okay, it's time for you to get up on the ladder. On the ladder? I mean, yeah, that cable goes up there. Oh. Yeah, it's an A-frame ladder, but it's, I don't yeah, think it extend, goes that it high. It extend twice that height, you know? That's extremely sketchy. I okay, would probably Okay, let's use die. this ladder on that garage door and we'll just do one okay, for hold today. Hold on a second. Let's just think for a second here. Hey, you know what? Dan's tall. Oh God. Don't worry, you always want to put it on the last rung. That's the safest one. I'm gonna uh, die. Why are we doing this on top of the ladder instead of bringing the ladder down? Well, because we thought that we could do it from on top of the ladder, obviously. Dan. 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 Everybody's being mean now. I'm totally dan oh. Hinge must be locked fully before using. Really, not partially? This is what I'm trying to say. What are you, working in the logistics department? Stop being so logistical about it. Just let it happen, no. Dan. He pays our bills. Sometimes. Is that the only reason you don't want me to die? Yeah, you also get blood all over the floor. This is awesome. Okay, we're, we're great. You can make it up to me by buying a desk pad on lttstore.com, making your workspace look so pretty. I'll buy two. This Cat6 run is the same one that's hooked up to the door sensor. So I stripped the same pair, the green pair, and now what I need to do is I need to wire it into my MIMO module here. This is Z-Wave Plus compatible, which means that our smartphone or whatever other smart device communicates over Wi-Fi to our Z-Wave controller. In our case, it's an AOTech stick and that is gonna communicate over Z-Wave to this buddy right here. Now, because of another issue we ran into with those GE switches, that they don't seem to support any kind of Z-Wave security or encryption, it seems like we might be having some signal strength issues because they also don't seem to pass through a signal for devices that do require security. For a light, I don't care. But for garage door opener, I care a lot. So in the meantime, Jake has plugged in a couple of AOTech smart receptacles to act as a relay for us, just to get the signal from the mechanical room to here. Whew, okay. So is ah. that ladder locked at all or no? Don't move around, it's locked a little. <laughs> yeah, safety patrol. Okay, I should be powered now, Jakku. Jakku? I see lights. Ah! Yes, it's working. When I just had it set up over there, it was barely working, like maybe one in every 10 tries. Now that I've added the repeater plugs and told that Z-Wave device to heal its connection, every time I click the button, it turns on. Hey, you wanna see it again? Eh? Nice. Signal two and ground? Yeah, and well, the appropriate ground, I'm sure you can figure that much I'll out. I'll find a ground. Well, there's actually three grounds. What? One for power, one for sig one, oh, and one for Jesus sig two. Christ. <laughs> Why did I even listen to what you said? Oh, I have to, ah, that makes sense. I was tinkering with it over there and I was playing with the sensor and it wasn't updating. You have to switch it from periodically update to on change, which is what we want, right? Mm. Do you have it hooked up now? Should be. Yeah, it's definitely reporting a different value. 
Okay, where is it right now? It's on. Okay. It's like next to it. Pull it away. Kay. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. So I can screw this onto the door then? Sure. Nice, okay. Oh, this is great. This is actually going shockingly smoothly. I guess that's what happens when we pre-test. I tested this shit out of these. Oh, ow, I pulled something. Ow. I'm weak. I'm weak, guys. It's closed right now then, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah, it's at four. Should I open the garage? No. I'm gonna open the garage. No, one I'm sec. I'm opening the garage. What the sec? Are you ready? Can I do it now? Yeah, you're good. Hey, which one is it, the bottom one? Uh, no, the bottom one is the close one. Wow, that's stupid. Open. Okay, stop. And open. And. Ah! Oh, I'm in the sensor. Okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> And close, immediate. Nice. Yes. Yes. That works so well. And we don't even have to have any janky wiring over by the buttons. They'll just work completely as normal. They have no idea that any of this is even here. Yeah, you just have to stick a little wire onto the button now. I have to stick a wire onto the button. Sorry, what? Oh, right. Okay, the button. I'm working on it. Jake, you don't happen to know which contacts I'm I mean, there's Bridging not, here. is there really that many? Well, there's three. Three? So I'm just gonna cut myself a nice big old chunk of this. I'm not sure what voltage a garage door button runs at, but it's probably like 12 volt DC. So a garage door opener or something sending signals is gonna be way too low voltage to trigger that. Cause this is door two, right? Where does this even go into? It's signal two, right? Yeah, well, they're called NO2, COM2, and NC2, which I'm assuming is no connection to. No, 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 that would be normally open and normally closed. So you'll want normally open two and COM2. Okay, sorry, one more time, door two. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't look at that right now. Can you look at it for a sec? No. Yes, you can. Fine. Door yes, two? that's door two. Brandon, can you even see from there? There's little lights turning on and it's going click, click. So can we just, wait, what? There's like caulking here, why? You ready? Hold on, hold on, no, no, don't do anything. You're not ready? Nothing. What do you mean nothing? I mean, it doesn't work. I don't believe you. Okay, go. Nope, nothing. What the? F okay, hold on, hold on, Jake. Let's try the red and white one just to humor me. I thought you were trying it both ways. That's what you said, you tried it the other way. No, and then I reversed the polarity, which doesn't it matter because it's matter. a momentary switch. I know. Oh it's been a rough oh day, my Jake. God. My bad. My bad. Stick it on there. This is so uncomfortable. I do not want to do this four Aww, times. Oh, muffin. Okay. My back hurts. Well, move the ladder so it's more ergonomic, you tool. Just get in there. Jake, hit it. Hey, Yay! It works. And the sensor updated immediately. Okay. Oh, my bad. Now it's time to mount this boy. So like, I mean, I guess here is fine, right? Just go for it. Brother, wherever you are. Uh, don't, don't do that. What? Don't do what? You can't get the cover on if you mount it to the ceiling first. Oh my God, the cover screws on from the back? Yeah. Why? Now I need to hook up jumper then so that I can control the other one as well. Yeah. Jake, I'm doing it. What? I'm undoing it. What? Right now I use the green pairs for both the sense and the signal from the button. But now that I know that we have to have two of the pairs coming from over there, one for signal, one for sense for the whether it's open or closed, I would like to color code it. I don't care, it's your house. Okay. The one downside to an approach like this is we don't really have a way to tell the garage door to open or close, we just have a way to tell it to activate which depending on where it is, will open or close. So I added a little bit of like logic to the sensor so that if the garage door is closed and you say, hey, Google Assistant, close the garage door, it's not gonna then open the door because that would suck. It'll only close it if it's open. But here, look at that. Ah, you gotta tell me when you're gonna do that. Why? Oh, wow. Yesterday at, at 7 p.m. you drew almost 8,000 watts concurrently. That's a little. Did you have the oven on maybe? All right. Oh. I think I did it, ow, my back. In order to get voice assistants like Google Assistant and that other one from Amazon to work, the best way to do it is to use Home Assistant Cloud, which is a paid service. It's only like five bucks a month, but it is run by the people that make Home Assistant, so. I thought the whole idea was I didn't want this to be cloud bound. Okay, well how is it gonna be not cloud bound if you wanna use Google Assistant? I don't know. So, 
Once you have that set up, all you need to do is add, you don't need the Home Assistant app for this. I don't? Well, you can get it later. Oh, okay. You need to activate the Home Assistant Cloud skill for Google Assistant. You can set it up without the cloud thing, but you have to use like a test app and you gotta like re-auth it every like two weeks. It's awful, you might as well just pay the $5. Okay, set up a device. Okay, so we're done setting up a device, which means we should be good to go then? Oh, oh, whoa, no way. Open the lower big garage. Yes! Yay! Is the lower big garage closed? It's open. Lower big garage D2 is open. And it is! Shut all the garage doors. Sweet! That's amazing! It tried to do that one. <laughs> and I tried. I heard it. To segue to our sponsor. Squarespace, do you think making a website's hard? Well, it is, but it doesn't have to be. With Squarespace, you'll have your website up and running in a matter of hours. Squarespace has award-winning templates that will help make your website stand out. So say goodbye to the drab, GeoCities-inspired hellscape, and say hello to Squarespace. Plus, if you're interested in how your website's doing, they have built-in tools to help you find out what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Both our Linus Media Group and LTX Expo websites were built quickly using Squarespace. But if you get stuck, don't worry. They have a support team that's available 24 seven, ready to help you out. So head to squarespace.com LTT and you can get 10% off right now. If you enjoyed this video, go check out our previous attempt at it where we got it working, but it caused a lot of problems later. This is a way better way of doing it. We're gonna have everything we use linked down below. This is definitely the better way of doing it. Oh, yay! We did it, boys.